Hello and welcome. Uh, we continue. We are towards the end of uh, this uh, uh, course that is from three work in history. But this time around, we are at a very, very good topic, and this is the Federation of Central Africa, the Central African Federation. Now, in this from three work, um, uh, it is a very good topic because it is still centering on Central African history. And on this one now, uh, it is like uh, partly we are looking, we are still looking at the how the British occupied or the administration of the Central Africa. Now on this one, uh, we are looking at now the amalgamation, the coming together of Central African countries. Now what happened in this topic? It is not very long. We are going to look at uh, what happened. What were the factors that prompted uh, the joining of? Uh, Central African countries, that is this, Zambia, uh, which is Northern Rhodesia, Southern Rhodesia, and as well as Nyasaland. What were the factors that uh, made uh, the administration to say, let us join uh, these uh, three countries and form one country, or one country, that is the federation. Then from there, we are going to look at the, uh, why uh, there was opposition, even from the whites as well as from the Africans. So we're going to look at it both uh, what happened or why did they oppose then after uh, it was done uh, what were the steps that were taken in order to impose because when there were criticism some uh, they just imposed that federation to say now there is a federation now we're going to look at it uh, what were the steps that were taken in order to impose the federation of central africa then from there we're going to, to look at the breakup what were the factors that resulted into the breakup of that Central African Federation? So it's a wonderful topic. It's a very good topic. So we're going to look at uh, uh, this topic now. Now uh, we are looking at the imposition of Central African Federation. So federation, it means the system of government made, uh, made up of several independent states. Uh, but on which on which on overall all uh, agree to have one national uh, government uh, that is responsible for specific areas like finance, customs, uh, currency, defense, as well as foreign affairs. So you have to understand it in this way that it, it is a system of government that is made up of several. Uh, independent states. So if you can see to it that the, uh, there are independent states that are there, but they come together and form one government who, which agree to uh, run some areas together like finance, custom currency, uh, defense, and many others. So currently the, uh, the countries that, uh, that use uh, this system of government includes a uh, country like Ni uh, USA and Nigeria. We have the federal government in Nigeria, and as well as USA. So, before Sister John Rhodes died, he had proposed a closer union uh, of British, uh, Southern Rhodesia, and Central Africa. So, uh, Sister John Rhodes, uh, he proposed uh, there must be a union, a closer union between Southern Rhodesia and Central uh, Africa. So. That is it. That was it, the beginning of the idea of uh, federation there. So we are saying the amalgamation of Northeast and Northwest Rhodesia in 1911 and um, convinced the administrators of Southern Rhodesia that it was possible to join Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia. So suggestion to join the two territories in 1916 by the BSA company, they were rejected uh, by the white settlers who were in southern Rhodesia. The reason was that northern Rhodesia was poor and settlers feared that resources from southern Rhodesia 
would be used to develop northern Rhodesia. So you can see to it that the, in 1916 there was that proposal now to say right because it has been possible to join uh, northeast and northwest Rhodesia. Therefore, it is also possible to join that northern Rhodesia, the joint northern Rhodesia with the southern Rhodesia and form uh, one territory. So in 1916, there was that proposal by the BSA company to join northern Rhodesia and southern Rhodesia to form one country. But there was a problem. The reason was that the settlers of uh, the white settlers of southern Rhodesia, them, they rejected the proposal. The reason was that they said uh, the southern Rhodesia was poor and they, uh, they feared that the resources from southern Rhodesia, they would be used to develop northern Rhodesia. So they rejected that one. And settlers, what happened was that settlers in southern Rhodesia, they favored, they preferred uh, an amalgamation or a joining together uh, or a federation with the, uh, the rich South Africa. So then in southern Rhodesia, they wanted to say, right, if we can be joined with South Africa, no problem. But with northern Rhodesia, no. South Africa is rich than northern Rhodesia. So this suggestion was rejected uh, in a referendum of uh, October 1922. So in 1922, there was that uh, referendum to say, uh, should we join with South Africa? But the people rejected to say, no, we are not joining with South Africa through a vote. Now, thereafter, then, there was just an imposition of that federation in position to say uh, it was forced to say right uh, whether we want it or not uh, there is going to be a federation now we are going to join our hands with the southern rhodesia so uh, uh, northern rhodesia and southern rhodesia so what were the reasons for the imposition to impose is just to put by force now uh, the reason uh, there were reasons uh political reasons that we are going to look at first the whites in the territories they wanted to achieve more autonomy from the london administration so uh, the whites uh, in both northern rhodesia and southern rhodesia they wanted to be independent from the uh, administration of the british government in london number two the federation would create a strong British political uh, sphere in Central Africa. So they felt like, all right, if we just impose the amalgamation, the union of Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia, there is going to be a very strong British uh, British influence in Central Africa. And also the Federation would preserve and strengthen the British civilization and culture in the region. So they felt like right if we impose the federation then uh, we are going to strengthen the british civilization and even the culture in central africa and also uh, the whites uh, thought that the federation would make the three territories uh, united and strong so the whites also uh, thought to say, right, because we have Nyasaran, Northern Rhodesia, and Southern Rhodesia, if we bring them together, then we are going to have uh, to make these territories very, very united and very strong. So that's what they thought. And also, uh, it would act as a model. It would act as a model for the establishment of similar unions in other areas such as the uh, in east africa so they wanted to make it to say right uh, an experiment like to say right if we do it then other territories like in east africa they are going to follow suit and they are going to do the same and also uh, the british government thought that the federation was a step towards the decolonization of the three territories so the British government had in mind to say, right, should we uh, put the federation there, then uh, it is one step towards uh, the independence of those countries. Because uh, what we are going to do is that uh, Nyasaland is going to be is, is a state on its own, but it's just going to be uh, in a union with other uh, states 
on other aspects like finance, defense and others, but other aspects they will be learning on their own. And also, uh, it would promote partnership of races as opposed to apartheid in uh, South Africa. So they also thought that, all right, uh, what is happening in South Africa is not good to say there is that demarcation to say, right, this area is for the blacks, this area is for the whites. That is what is called the apartheid, the apartheid that was there in uh, South Africa. So uh, they thought that, right, because in these territories as well, they are the whites as well as the, the Africans. But then if we make it as a federation, there is not going to be like a, that apartheid in South Africa. And also, they thought it would ease the British control of uh, the region by harmonizing its policies on research, customs, currency, trade, defense, as well as communication. So uh, they also thought that the British control would be eased. Uh, they would ease the control uh, uh, the area because they are going to harmonize the policies. To harmonize means uh, maybe uh, to reduce, to make them equal, to make them equal, to say the policies that are used in Zimbabwe or in Zambia, they are the same that are used in Malawi. So that is to harmonize. So they thought, right, if we harmonize the policies on research, uh, on the customs, on uh, the money, that is currency, on trade, and defense as well as communication, then uh, management of this territory is going to be very simple. That's what the British thought also. We are looking at the economic, uh, the political reasons why the Federation was imposed. Now here, let's look at the economic reasons. What were the economic reasons why the Federation was imposed on uh, Rhodesia's and Nyasaland? So number one was to create a powerful economic union, a powerful economic union uh, attracting large scale investment. So they wanted to create a, a powerful union. Number two was to, uh, the integration, the integration of industries of Southern Rhodesia, uh, copper from Northern Rhodesia uh, and abundant labor from Yasaland would result into a vibrant and stable economic rejoining the region. So this would attract investors into the region. So they thought, yes, if we join these three territories, in Yasaland there is labor, in Southern Rhodesia there are a lot of resources, and uh, in Northern Rhodesia there is copper. So if we match these three, we match them, we bring them together, then we are going to attract more investors from outside to invest in big companies in this region. And again, they thought it would promote even distribution of development in the region. So they thought, right, what is going to happen in Zambia is the same in Nyasaland as well as in Southern Rhodesia. So they thought there is going to be even distribution, equal distribution of development in this region. As well, uh, the Federation would make the region independent, independent and self-sufficient than before so they also thought all right we just need to impose this federation because it is going to make this region independent because <clears throat> because Nyasaland is not going to stand on its own and the, uh, the two Rhodesias they are not going to be on their own they are going to do the things together as a result they are going to be very very much uh, powerful Now let us look at the uh, reasons why the reasons why the Africans are uh, the reasons here now we'll be looking at the reasons why the Africans are uh, uh, opposed to the Federation why Africans opposed the Federation so number one was that it was an imposition it was an imposition on the native Africans they were not concerted in the whole process. So Africans in the whole thing here, uh, whether it was good or bad, but they were not concerted. As a result, they were they had not they had no say on this one. So they did not like that one because it was just like they were following the things that uh, were to happen. 
And number two was that the Africans from Nyasaland and Northern Rhodesia, they feared that the racial segregation and discrimination policies followed in Southern Rhodesia uh, would promote uh, would be promoted in uh, in, um, in, in, uh, in those areas or in Nyasaland as well, Northern Rhodesia. So some of the policies or segregations were such as the Africans were not allowed to drink any type of European liquor. So there were liquor that was just for uh, the whites and the liquor for the uh, for the Africans. So you can see to it that the Africans only for Kachaso and the uh, Tonjani and the like, but the, Af uh, but the whites now to drink Carlsberg, to drink the, all the bottled beer like that. And Africa, uh, Africans were not allowed to drink that, uh, that European beer. And also Africans were also not allowed to buy items from inside a white man's shop. Uh, but through a window like that. So Africans not allowed to buy anything from the white man's shop, uh, only through a window. And they were also not allowed to use European uh, hotels. Africans not in European hotels. And also they were not allowed to take part in state lottery, things like those. So you can see those were some of the policies that were followed in Southern Rhodesia. Now, people in northern Rhodesia and in Nyasaland, they did not like such policies to happen in their territories. As, as such, they opposed, they opposed the racial segregation and discrimination policies that were taking place in uh, southern Rhodesia. They did not want to spread into uh, their territories. And also Africans, they feared that the Federation would delay the safe government. They feared that, all oh, right, uh, if we say yes to uh, federation, then we are not going to be independent very soon. And the whole process uh, that was first, uh, uh, the whole process was fast tracked. It was done very, very quickly. So Africans, therefore, they were suspicious of the motives to say, what is the reason for uh, making these things uh, very, very fast? So uh, they uh, were not happy with it, that. And again, Africans, they wondered why the British government ignored African views. So African views against the Federation, they were not considered. So educated Africans and chiefs, they argued against it. But still, the colonial government itself, it went ahead to impose the uh, Federation. So Africans, they did not like that to say, right, you are not getting from us, but you are just uh, like informing us to say, right, we are doing this whether they like it or not. So that's not the way to go. And also Africans, they feared that they, they would have very little influence in the Federation. So Africans, they also feared that they would not uh, maybe take part in that Federation. It would just be for the whites. And also Africans, they did not want the Federation based on white supremacy. They did not want the Federation that is driven by the whites, or that is imposed by the whites. It was better to have a federation done by themselves, the Africans. Here now, we are going to look at the developments now leading to federation. What were the steps that were taken uh, towards the federation of Rhodesia and Nyasaland? Number one, we are going to look at Devon Share Declaration in 1929. Devon Share uh, Devon Share uh, Declaration of 1929, in, of 1923, sorry. So in 1923, the British government used a statement uh, outlining its uh, stand on the colonial policy. So it stated that any discussion regarding the Federation must consider African interest as the paramount. So look at that. On the Devon Share uh, Declaration 1923. So the British government now issued that statement uh, after knowing that the Africans they are they are opposing to uh, this federation. So what do we do? So they said, all right, uh, the any discussion that is about the federation, it has got the paramount or the most important consideration of uh, the African interest. 
So it was like attracting the Africans there to say, all right, uh, you are saying that this one is for the African interest, like that. And in 1929, that's, that was when there was the Hilton Commission, the Hilton Commission 1929. So the commission was chaired by Sir Hilton Young, Hilton Young. So he was, uh, it was set up to look into the possibility of a federation between the British East and Central African colonies. So it found out that the a federation could not be possible due to communication problems. So that was the, the, one of the findings uh, of the Hilton Commission. Secondly, uh, Africans would work against the minority whites. So the Hilton Commission founded out uh, two, it had two findings to say uh, the federation is not possible, number one, because of communication barrier, communication problem. There are no good roads to connect uh, these uh, territories. And number two was that uh, the majority of the people in these areas, they are the Africans and they hate this federation. But this federation is driven by the whites who are few. So they thought that no, the Africans are going to work against the uh, minority, the whites, uh, in this federation. Then in 1930, there was the, the Passfield Memorandum of 1930. Uh, Passfield Memorandum. Remember, we are looking at the steps towards uh, the imposition of uh, the federation. So the British Secretary uh, of, for Dominion Affairs, the Dominion Affairs, uh, Lord Passfield published a memorandum in 1930 uh, which repeated the principles of the Devonshire Declaration that African interests should be considered as paramount. So that was the memorandum of 1930, the Passfield uh, memorandum. So the memorandum repeated uh, the terms uh, of the Devonshire to say, right, we have to put the interest of Africans first if we are driving for the federation. Then there was another meeting, the Victoria Falls, the first Victoria Falls Conference of 1936. So in 1936, there was the, the first Victoria Falls. So when Sir Geoffrey uh, Hugins, Sir Geoffrey Hugins became the prime minister for Southern Rhodesia in 1934, he promoted the issue of uh, federation or the issue of amalgamation, that is uh, the same federation. So in 1936, representatives from Northern Rhodesia, Southern Rhodesia, uh, they met to di discuss the issue of that federation or amalgamation. So the representatives, they supported the issue of uh, that federation of the two territories, territories that is uh, Northern Rhodesia, and Southern Rhodesia. So you have to take note of that to say the first Victoria Falls, it was about Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia coming together, making a union, a federation of two uh, states. Then uh, next step was the, the Bledslow, Bledslow uh, Commission of 1938. There was that Bledslow Commission of 1938. So the British government instituted a commission of inquiry chaired by uh, Viscount Bledslow, Viscount Bledslow, to find out the possibility of a federation among Nyasaland, Northern and Southern Rhodesia. So the Bledslow, after they agreed, representatives, they agreed at the first Victoria Falls 1936, then uh, Bledslow commission was set up to say, right, find out. Is it possible to add uh, Nyasaland on the federation? So the commission found out that Northern Rhodesia strongly rejected the federation. So Northern Rhodesia uh, rejected the uh, federation itself to say, no, 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 bringing three countries together, no. So the commission also rejected amalgamation and the uh, federation altogether. So the commission rejected to say no it cannot happen to join these countries or form a federation and recommended it recommended the establishment of interterritorial uh, council interterritorial uh, council which could coordinate the government services and economic needs of the three countries so 
In, instead, the Bread Slow Commission, it suggested that uh, if at all we want to do something, then we all we need to do is just to put this, this inter-territorial council. So this inter-territorial council would have the work of uh, uh, looking at the economic needs of uh, these uh, territories. Then another step was the second Victoria Falls Conference of 1949. So the British government pers uh, persuaded Sir Roy Werenske to drop the policy of amalgamation because it was impractical. So mind you, on this amalgamation, uh, amalgamation basically, it was to join these things permanently as one country. So that's why the British government said, no, no, no. Uh, this amalgamation forming one Central African country is not possible. Uh, it's better uh, we go for a federation. Independent states joining together on some other issues while they run other issues independently. So that's how we need to understand amalgamation and federation. Amalgamation forming, just forming one state or joining one state permanently. While federation, uh, on the other hand, it is about uh, just uh, uh, joining the countries on some issues, but they are independent states. So instead, uh, the British government, uh, they said there should be a focus on the federation of the three countries and not amalgamation. So Africans became suspicious of European motives since they were excluded from the discussion. So on all what was happening, the Africans were not included in the same. So Africans in London, such as Dr. Hastings Kamuzubanda of Nyasaland, Harlem Kumba of um, Kumbula of uh, Northern Rhodesia, uh, they protested against the Federation as well. The reason we are saying that Africans were not involved. It was just like uh, the white man's job to join Africans. So Africans, some educated Africans, they did not like it. Then there was the third, the third Victoria Conference of 1951. So this time, Africans from three countries were invited for the discussions. So Chief Mwase, Clement uh, Kumbikano, and Edward Gondwe, they represented Nyasaland. So look at that now. Uh, Chief Mwase should be Kasungu there now. Uh, Clement Kumbikano and Edward Gondwe, they represented Nyasaland. So the British colonial secretary at the meeting, uh, that was Mr. James Griffin, Griffith, uh, was convinced that the Federation would not work out uh, without the African support. So uh, at the meeting there, they, really, they were really convinced, the whites were convinced to say no, uh, this Federation, much as it is supported by the whites, but it needs much support from the uh, from the Africans. And also there was the London Conference of 1951 and uh, 1953. Between 1951 and 1953, there was a meeting or a conference in London. So Mr. Oliver Littleton of the Conservative Party he replaced Mr. James Griffiths in 1951. So Mr. Oliver Littleton believed that Africans could not see the advantages uh, of the Federation as such it had to be imposed on them. So uh, you can uh, compare the two there. While well, Mr. Griffith, he said, oh, the Africans are needed if we the, uh, the, the Federation is to work. But when Mr. Griffith was out of office, the next uh, one, Mr. Oliver Littleton, he said, no, we are just going to spend much time with Africans. They are not going to allow uh, this thing to happen. So let's, for it to work, let's just impose it on them. Whether they like it or not, let's just uh, uh, impose this federation on Central Africa. Now, there was... Uh, uh, it was imposed, therefore, uh, in nine, the same year, 1951. But uh, uh, the federation itself, it did not uh, work. It did not tell, uh, take much time. So here we're going to look at the uh, end of the federation. So here we're going to look at the events uh, leading to the breakup of that federation in uh, 
1963. So the ratio segregative policies by the whites in southern Rhodesia was one of the factors. So Africans in Nyasaland, in northern Rhodesia, intensified the fight for independence of their territories because they feared the racial segregative policies in southern Rhodesia. And also a delay, a delay by the federal, uh, the federation or the federal government to amend the, uh, the federal constitution raised by uh, suspicion among the Africans uh, on when the federation would end and grant political independence, independence to each territory. So there was a delay uh, in granting independence in uh, these territories. As such, Africans, they were, they ganged up to fight for that federation to say, no, we don't need uh, this federation. And also recommendations from the Moncton Commission of 1960. Uh, it weakened uh, the step ahead of the federation. So what happened was that in 1953, some political parties in Nyasaland and Northern Rhodesia, they opposed the uh, federation. Then also following the civil unrest of 1959, uh, then Nyasaland, which included, uh, included strikes, uh, riots and demonstrations. The governor, uh, Sir Robert Armitage, declared, uh, declared a state of emergency on uh, 3rd March 1959. So there was the civil unrest in Nyasaland in 1959. So during that civil unrest, there were the strikes, riots, demonstrations. So if you see the demonstrations today, uh, in Nyasaland, don't think that you are the first people to state the demonstrations, whether against the government or against who. Uh, in 1959, there were the demonstrations there. Uh, the people, uh, they were against still uh, the federation. So on 3rd March 1959, there was a, uh, the declaration of the state of emergency to say, no, Nyasaland needs support because of the civil unrest. There was the Moncton Commission, that, uh, which we have just mentioned uh, in 1960, the Moncton Commission. It was led by uh, Lord Viscount Moncton. So the aims of this Moncton Commission were, number one, to find out if Africans supported the Federation or not. So the Commission, it was there to find out, to say, right, are Africans in support of the Federation or not? And also to find out uh, the constitutional changes and lifespan of the uh, federation. So they also wanted to set or find out the changes in the constitution of the federation as well as the, the lifespan. How long is this uh, federation going to stay? So the Moncton Commission had a number of findings. Number one was the commission found out that the Africans strongly, strongly opposed the federation. And also it recommended, to say right, uh, it recommended that any country which wanted to secede or break out from the Federation should be allowed to do so. So uh, it made that a recommendation to say because Africans oppose the Federation, therefore they, they must be allowed to secede or to break out from the Federation itself. The Federation therefore was dissolved on 31st December 1963 to say no, it is not going to work. So there was that uh, Federation which lasted the, uh, almost a decade there. Uh, now let us look at, let us assess this uh, Federation uh, by looking at the, uh, the successes as well as the, uh, the weaknesses of the Federation itself. So on the successes, number one, hospitals were, were constructed in Salisbury, that is Harare, in Kitwe, as well as Blantyre. Uh, in Blantyre, we talk of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. It was built during the period of this federation by the British uh, colonial government. Also, construction of Kariba Dam for hydroelectric power to cater for industries and mines in southern Rhodesia and northern Rhodesia. So there was that construction of the Kariba Dam. And also agricultural schemes were initiated in the Sabi Valley in southern Rhodesia, in Kafue in northern Rhodesia, and Shire Valley in Nyasaland. 
and also the development of fishing and tourism industries in northern Rhodesia as well as southern Rhodesia. However, this federation also had its failures. What were the failures of the, uh, the federation or the federal government that was imposed in Central Africa? Number one, there was an even distribution of development, development which greatly favored Southern Rhodesia. You can see to it there, to say, <clears throat> because Southern Rhodesia, in Southern Rhodesia, there were a lot of whites there. Therefore, development, much of the development was in Southern Rhodesia as compared to Northern Rhodesia and Nyasaland. For example, Kaliba Dam and the University of Rhodesia and Nyasaland uh, benefited uh, southern Rhodesia. So uh, the Kariba Dam and the University of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. There was the building of the uh, University of Rhodesia and Nyasaland. So these two, the University and the Kariba Dam, they only benefited the southern Rhodesia. So that's why we are saying that there was an even development uh, which favored only southern Rhodesia. And also racial segregation policies they were followed under the federal system. So still there were those racial segregation policies in all these three countries uh, whereby uh, there are things for the whites and the things for the Africans. So Africans did not like that as well. So it was a weakness of the federal government. However, uh, we need also to consider a number of issues during this period whereby uh, skilled jobs were reserved for the uh, Europeans. So that is what we have to take note of that, uh, what was happening inside the Federation. And also uh, in education, for every one pound spent on African pupil, 20 pounds were spent on, each, on a European pupil. So if uh, the federal government is spending on education uh, on each and every uh, student, uh, African student. If it is one pound for a student, African uh, child, it was 20 pounds for uh, the uh, Europeans. So you can see there uh, the uneven distribution of resources and discrimination against Africans in administration. For example, uh, uh, there were only six seats out of 36 in the Federal Assembly for Africans. So all the six uh, were the Africans who represented, who were represented in the council or like in the, in the Congress or in the parliament of the federal government. Uh, the rest, 30 seats were for the whites. So again, federal government carried out decisions without the consent of Africans. So you see to it again, the federal government, it was uh, carrying out its decisions uh, without consulting the Africans, the owners of the land. And also the, fed, uh, the federation's economy uh, over depended uh, on few natural resources, e.g. it mainly relied on the export of copper. So uh, there were few resources that uh, this federal government depended on as such, it was really not possible to continue with this federation because there were not much items for export. As such, maybe revenue uh, to run the administrative uh, issues in this federation, it was to be very, very uh, tough. Now to this far, we have come to the end of this topic. Now it has been a good topic because we have looked at a number of issues on the Federation of Central Africa, the factors that led to the Federation, uh, the opposition of this Federation, why some opposed this Federation. So uh, it has been really good. Now this, uh, uh, this time I leave you with the questions. There are questions here that I need you to do. So number one, define the federation. Number two, what was the uh, preference preference of settlers in southern Rhodesia on federation? And number three, explain any three reasons why Africans opposed the federation in Central Africa. And number four, explain any three steps taken towards the, the federation uh, of Central Africa. And also, uh, what were the two main events that led to the uh, breakup of the 
uh, federation, the federation of uh, Central Africa, and also give any two aims, give any two aims, any two aims and two findings of the uh, Moncton Commission of uh, 1960. And there is an essay here which you have to write. So the essay says, uh, discuss the uh, successes and failures or weaknesses of the uh, Central African Federation. So this is your work that you have to do. It's just very small, but it, it covers almost the whole topic. So make sure you handle this topic as you have been doing. Uh, go through and write it on a piece of paper. After you do that, then you take a photo or you scan, then you send yours on uh, this number that is on WhatsApp. You send that photo of your work on uh, this, uh, uh, this number on WhatsApp, or you can also send it via email because this email is there waiting for your responses on the same. So make sure you do this work before you go to the next topic. So uh, do this work. But then uh, we are now going to conclude. We are going to wind up our uh, Form 3 work by looking at the African independent churches. So this one, it is a very, very good topic. It's a very good topic. So uh, just uh, follow through this topic as well as you have done with the, the uh, Federation of Central Africa. So on this topic, you are going to enjoy much because it is going to talk about the churches, the African churches, churches that were started by Africans. You know, today we have so many churches that uh, are led by the Africans. So we are going to see the roots of uh, those African churches. So this one again, it is really a wonderful topic as we come to the end of this Form 3 work. So be there on the next, uh, next topic. So see you on the next topic. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.